Welcome to part two on JFK and the Civil Rights Movement. Now we're going to take a look at the Bay of Pigs. In 1959, a young revolutionary by the name of Fidel Castro was going to overthrow the Batista government in Cuba and establish a communist regime. Cuba had been effectively under American control since it was wrestled away from the Spanish in the Spanish-American War in 1898. Yes, Cuba was independent, but the United States had written their constitution, and in that constitution, they actually reserved the right to overthrow any unfriendly governments, right? So this uh, Fidel Castro uh, revolution allowed that constitution to be torn up. Since this was the Eisenhower administration when this happened, immediately after this, you're going to start seeing planning for a clandestine CIA-backed mission to overthrow the Castro government, just like what uh, you saw with Guatemala and Iran. Okay, Kennedy will inherit this plan when he takes office, uh, and he'll expand it. He'll take its budget from $4 million to $46 million. The CIA will begin not just training Cuban exiles, and in, in ironically Guatemala, but they'll begin building uh, with this extra money a air force, a, a revolution air force to bomb Castro's aircraft, right? But there's a lot of problems with this, this plan from its very beginnings. First of all, uh, its secretness is, its, its security is horrible. Um, Castro is getting intel on this planned invasion, or at least the training of revolutionaries to invade Cuba from the American press. I mean, it's articles showing up in the New York Times. The landing site that was initially planned for um, was moved because the initial landing site was uh, further to the east. Uh, on the south coast would allow them to uh, attack, and if the original attack didn't work, they could quickly disappear into the mountains and, uh, and just start an insurgency from there. But that was moved because it was a little bit too close to a major city, and they felt, well, that might cause too much collateral da damage. So they moved it to a place called Bahia de Cochinos, right, the Bay of Pigs, okay? This is a terrible spot. It's kind of marshy. It's uh, flat. It's, you can't get to the mountains uh, readily if, if the invasion goes bad. And worst of all, unbeknownst to uh, the CIA, this is also Fidel Castro's favorite fishing hole. This is where he goes to uh, scuba fish and things like that. He knows the ins and outs of this particular reason, region like the back of his hands. It's really the worst possible place for him to, uh, uh, for them to mount an invasion. So needless to say, the invasion is a disaster, right? On April 15th, 1961, the CIA Air Force, or this, excuse me, the Insurgency Air Force, begins bombing Castro's Air Force and destroying it on the ground. And then for some reason, the very next day, Kennedy, uh, like I said, the reasons for this has never been fully explained anyways, and can't find them out now. Uh, Kennedy calls them off, says, no, you got to stop, right? Some kind of, you know, he, I think he's probably fearing some kind of escalation, right? So that means that only part of Castro's Air Force is destroyed. On the 17th of April, about 1,500 exiles armed with U.S. weapons land there at the Bay of Pigs. Uh, and they are very quickly routed, right? They only get about 20 miles uh, inland. Uh, Castro's forces begin to uh, wrap them up. They have no avenue of escape. They can't escape back out the sea. They can't get to the mountains, right? And so this is a huge public embarrassment for JFK. Here he is in his inaugural address just last January. He said, I'm a Cold Warrior president. I'm going to win the Cold War. And then all of a sudden, the very thing, first thing he does is that he uh, shows or get, creates the appearance of, I'm really not going to be very good at this, right? Uh, this is uh, in turn going to embolden Khrushchev. As a matter of fact, it's probably going to lead to this escalation of arming his new ally in Cuba, including arming them with nuclear weapons.